Welcome to lesson one, how to calculate and make an exponential moving average chart in Excel. Previously, last week, you learned about simple moving averages. You learned how to calculate them, graph them, and how to interpret the trends. You also learned that a simple moving average smooths out some of the fluctuations in the price. This week, you will learn about exponential moving averages and how they differ from simple moving averages. You will also learn how to graph exponential moving averages and do a little bit of an analysis. Next up, we're going to watch a short video that will help you to understand those differences. I participated in a trading webinar this past weekend where I demonstrated a few strategies to about a thousand participants. The question I got asked the most over and over by at least 20 traders was to provide my favorite indicator for trading technical analysis strategies. My answer was quick and fast. It would be the 20 day exponential moving average. The exponential moving average is a variation of a simple moving average. Before computers were widely used for market analysis, traders relied on simple moving average indicators because they were easy and simple to calculate. For example, to calculate a 10 day simple moving average, you simply add the closing price of the last 10 days and divide by 10. You can see in this example how the simple moving average reacts much, much slower to price action than the exponential moving average. This is the primary reason why most traders rely on the exponential moving average instead of the simple one. Take a look at another example of how the exponential moving average is quicker to react when trading technical analysis trends. In this example, you can see how much faster the exponential moving average reacts to the stock turning back up. The simple moving average barely moves while the stock is gaining substantial momentum upwards. The first thing you need to do is adjust the exponential moving average to 20 days. The 20 days is a good starting point for most volatile stocks, futures, and currency markets. If you're day trading, use 20 bars instead of days. After you adjust the settings, you want to find a stock or other market that you're trading that's substantially above the 20 day exponential moving average. The further the price is away from the average, the better. You can see in this example how the stock is trading above the moving average. This is a great filter for finding stocks or other markets that are trending strongly. The next step is to monitor the stock or whatever market you're trading and wait for the market to trade completely below the 20 day moving average. In this example, you could see exactly what I'm talking about. You want to make sure the high is not touching the EMA. The next step after the stock you are trading drops completely below the 20 day EMA is to wait for the market to trade once again completely above the 20 day EMA. You can see how the stock only dropped for a few days prior to resuming the strong trend. This is a good sign. If the stock was to stay below the average for more than one week, I would probably be a bit concerned about continued momentum. Here's how the entire pattern looks like on one continuous chart. You can get a good feel for how the 20 day EMA filters strong trending markets and more importantly, how it identifies pullbacks away from the trend. In the video, you learn that exponential moving averages place a greater weight on current prices versus simple moving averages which place an equal weight on all values. Now let's look at some other indicators of when to buy or when to sell. Here we have a exponential moving average. Notice that this is called a support area because the trend line of the prices will come down to the support, bounce off and go back up. And that tends to happen repeatedly, very rarely going under. And then we end up later with a resistance line. And what that means here is that we have the opposite effect. So now the prices will go up against the line and bounce off like a ceiling. So those are some of the things that you should look for when you're analyzing the exponential moving average as well as the simple moving average. Now let's go ahead and calculate and make our own exponential moving average as well as graph it. The first step in calculating our averages is to find a company. 
So I'm going to find the stock from Disney. So I went to finance.yahoo.com and I'm going to type in Disney. Notice that as I st start typing it in, it pulls up, it finds for me the company and it pulls up the ticker symbol DIS. Once I've located it, I can click on it and it will direct me to the current Walt Disney closing price as well as some additional information and a chart with stock prices. But what I want to go to is over here, historical prices. When I click on historical prices, it will direct me to a page that shows all the previous opening, closing, highs and lows for the Walt Disney Company. And I can scroll down here and I can see the dates for each day, the open, high, low, close, and the volume. Now I can scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's more information, but it's not listed here. I can go to next and last and continue to find all the stock prices. But what I want to do instead is go to download spreadsheet right down here at the bottom. This will take all this information and load it into a spreadsheet for me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on download to spreadsheet. Here's all the information that was downloaded. Now I've gone ahead and put in a title as well as the name of the company and I've put in some steps, the equation and then some things that the equation represents. Down here my data was collected from finance.yahoo.com. That'll be beneficial for you to write down when you're looking for data. So take a minute and pause the video and write down the steps for how to calculate an exponential moving average in Excel. Alright, so let's look at step one. Find a stock. We did that. Click on the historical values link. We did that as well. And then step three, download to a spreadsheet. That's where we are now. Alright, so step four, eliminate all data other than the date and close values. So this is an important step. We don't care about the open, the high, or the low, or the volume, or the adjusted close. We just want the close values. The easiest way to do that is to click and highlight all the columns that you want to get rid of, and then you can go to delete. Now if you don't have a delete button like I do, another thing you can do is right click on all this data, and then you'll see delete right here. So what you would then do is delete those columns. Now I just have date and close. So I can go to volume and adjusted close. Notice how I click on the C and the D in order to highlight the entire column. And once again, I can hit delete depending upon the version of Excel you have or right click and find delete there. It's also available in the menu at the top. Now that I've deleted all my extra data and all I have here is the date and the closing price, what I'll do now is go to step five. I need to determine an alpha value. Usually the alpha values are between 0.1 and 0.3 and this will help to smooth my values. You should know that the greater the alpha value, the closer your chart will look like the actual closing price. The smaller the alpha value, the more smooth it'll be and we'll examine that difference once we graph our information. Be careful though when you're typing in your alpha value that you actually type the value into its own cell not with the words alpha equals, otherwise Excel won't recognize the point three as a number. All right, now let's move on to step six. We need to calculate the average of the first six values. That's what we're going to use, six values, but you could use 20 days or 10 days. But this will give us our initial S in our equation. Here's our equation again. So our equation is, in order to figure out our exponential moving average, which is s given time t, we take our alpha value times our stock price, that's what our y represents, plus 1 minus the alpha times the previous moving average amount. Now our initial exponential moving average is really just a simple moving average. In order to calculate the simple moving average for the first six days, we need to put in a formula. So we use equals to start the formula, and then I can type the word average. Notice that it comes up, parentheses, 
and then I will click on or highlight the six days that I want. Once I have those days highlighted, B6 through B11, I will end my parentheses and press enter. Notice now I have my simple moving average for about six days, just one period. I'm going to adjust my decimal point up here by clicking on decrease the number of decimal spots to just two decimals. Okay, now I'm on to step seven. Here's where I'm going to calculate my actual exponential moving average. So I need to put in a formula. All formulas begin with an equal sign. So once again, I'm going to press equals, and then I'll look at my formula. I want alpha, so I'll go ahead and click on the cell that has my alpha, times, I'll hit the asterisk for times, and then y, t minus one. So that's my starting value, that's my starting closing price. So that's the 77.78. I'll go ahead and click on that. Then it says plus, and then a parentheses, and then one minus, and then it says alpha again. So once again, I'm going to either type in or click on the cell that has my alpha value, which is F4, and parentheses, then times, and then finally it says S T minus one, which really means my initial average, which is right up here in cell C6. This is my initial average, which is really just a simple moving average. So I'm going to click on the cell or type it in. Notice up here in the bar, you can write this down. Here is my formula, all typed in using cell references. If I feel confident about this, I would hit enter. The one problem is though, is that I'm going to fill this formula down. I don't want to have to type it every single time. So there's some values that I don't want to change. And that would be my alpha value of 0.3, which is in cell F4. So in order to stop that value from changing, I will click up in the function bar up here in front of my F4, and I will type a dollar sign in front of F and a dollar sign in front of 4. And then I'll go over to the next place where I see a 4 inside the parentheses, and once again type a dollar sign in front of F and in front of 4. And then I'll press return. Now that alpha value is locked in, it won't change. I'm going to decrease my decimal places down to two once again. And now I'm ready to fill down my formula. There's two ways you can do this. You can do this on your menu. On your menu, you can go to edit, fill, down, or you can click on the cell that you want to fill and in this far right corner, if you can change the icon to a black cross and you double click, it will fill that formula down for you automatically to the bottom of your table. Now I've gone ahead and ended my table here on March 14, 2014, just because I didn't need that much data. You don't have to include all of the data because there is an awful lot. Okay, now we're ready to graph. And what I wanna graph is my closing price as well as my exponential moving average. I want to see a comparison. Well, graphing is very easy in Excel. All you do is click on the first cell that has your title date and then highlight as far down as you want to graph. And again, don't try to graph all of your data because you might have years and years of daily data and that's an awful lot to graph. So just pick about 20 or 30 days and highlight that and we'll graph it. All right, once you have highlighted that, it's time to insert a chart. So you can go to insert chart, or if you have a charts tab, you can go to chart your charts tab, and then we'll insert a line graph. And what I wanna do is I wanna go and I wanna insert a marked line graph. And you can see that choice over here. Let me go back to it. Right here, a marked line graph, because I wanna see all the points of my prices and my exponential moving average. So once I click on that, here it comes automatically right up in the center of your chart. Now the only thing is, don't leave it like this. Let's go ahead and format it. One way you can format it is to make it longer, make it deeper, 
and then we can adjust the scale. Notice we don't really need to see anywhere from 74 to about 76. And as far as the top, the maximum, we really only go up to about 82 and a half maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my scale, right click on it, and I'm going to format my axes. Up here in the left side, you can see where it says scale. So my minimum, we said I really only need to see about 76. So I'm going to delete the 4 and type in 76. Notice how it unchecks this box. Maybe I'll go ahead and leave it now and see what happens. So I'm going to click OK. And now you can see a better view of your chart. Notice that I have my close key, which is in blue, versus my exponential moving average, which is in red. And you can see that there's still a lag, but it more closely resembles your daily prices. Now what happens if I change the alpha? Remember that I said as the alpha gets bigger, it's going to mirror the prices. So what if I change it to 0.8? Notice that the two lines almost fit on top of each other. Now if I change it to a 0.1, you can see how smooth this exponential moving average really is as far as an indicator. So you have to decide 0 0.2, 0 0.3, what is better for you? As long as you understand that the higher the alpha, the closer it resembles your actual daily price. But the goal is to create a trend line and not have so many fluctuations. So that's why the alphas are usually between 0.1 and 0.3. Now, even though moving averages are considered, like I said, lagging indicators, remember that an exponential moving average has a more closer resemblance of what is going to happen in the market compared to a simple moving average that lags rather far behind. Notice here on our red line, our exponential moving average, that we start to trend down here before the price actually trends down. And then we start to trend up a little bit before the price actually trends up. So this is a very favorite indicator of many brokers for looking at where the prices are going to go to help us to determine trends. And so if we were to continue on out and, and um, list the prices, what do you think that our exponential moving average would do? That's something that you can predict on your own. And this ends our lesson today on exponential moving average. At this time, you should be able to understand how to calculate it using this formula, as well as how to put the results in Excel and create a graph in order to help you to analyze.